Hello, my lovelies. Continuing on our Scooby-Doo theme, we have our Scooby-Doo Posh Book. What do we need? Well, we need to print out our stitch order sheet. And you know me, I love to make my little notes on my stitch order sheet so I know what I'm doing and where I'm at. So color one is die lines for placement of FOE and ribbon. You will need a quarter inch ribby ribbon, about eight and a half to nine inches long. You will need three pieces of FOE, about two and a half inches each. Then we're gonna run color stop two, which will tack all of that Meshuggah and Al. And um, after color stop two, we are gonna float our base vinyl pretty side up, and we are gonna do some decoration on it. We have on this windshield an applique piece. <gasps> Did I say applique? And you're panicking. Don't panic. So we're gonna applique the windshield so it's decreasing the amount of stitches we have to do. And then we're gonna do some more detail, some more detail, some more detail, and then boom, just before the last color stop, we're gonna flip our hoop over and we are going to attach the back and our pockets so we can slip our little notebook in there. And we're gonna put some um, blurb, no, not blurb. Blarb is not the, Blarb is a, the brand name. Um, the product is actually called WSS. We're gonna float a piece of WSS so our pockets don't catch and so that this pretty glittery vital doesn't snag. All right, so what do we do first? Well, we hoop up some medium weight cutaway, which is my very favorite kind of cutaway. And we put it in the machine and we run color stop one. And we will be back at color stop, after color stop one. Okay, kids, we've run our die lines. This is where we gotta put stuff. So I am going to, these big long jumps that we've got here, um, your machine is gonna wanna catch those and pull stuff out of hoops and make a mess. So I just trimmed them out. Now we are going to grab first our piece of ribby ribbon. Um, it's also apparently pronounced grow grain ribbon. Rah, rah, rah. Yeah, I like ribby ribbon. And I am going to about a quarter of an inch below this die line right here. I'm gonna put a piece of tape tape, hold it in place, and to make sure it doesn't catch my needle head, I am gonna put a little piece of tape there. And so that I don't stitch this ribbon into um, the back of my uh, pattern, which I have done before. We're gonna pin it on the stabilizer outside the hoop, far away from everything. Now we are gonna rotate this way. We're gonna grab some of our FOE and we're gonna fold it in half, raw edge to raw edge. We're gonna take a little piece of tape. And this pattern requires a significant amount of tapey tape. And now I'm gonna tape it down over here to hold it in place. I'm gonna take another one. Woohoo! And I am putting those raw edges to the inside of the pattern, to the inside of the pattern. And I'm doing about a quarter inch down. I'm making sure that my tape does not go across my die line so that my needle does not try to sew my tape down. We're gonna go rotate. There we go, last one, guys. Here we are, fold it in half. Boom and boom. Gonna tape it down about a quarter inch past. There we go. And boom, more tape. We're gonna throw it in the machine. We're gonna run color stop two, two, two. Back in a second. Okay, kiddos. On the mystery machine posh book, we have got all of our pieces and parts tacked down. That's what that last color stop was for. Now I am going to remove this piece of tape because it serves no purpose. Ditto. Ah, I don't want that all crinkly. I want it to lay flat. And since I've got to run, there, ha, huh, now you're flat. Uh, just like me in middle school. All right, yeah, gotta watch those. They wanna unravel, blurg. And this one too. So remove all of your interior tapes and then grab your vinyl and we're gonna float it. Um, I am feeling a little paranoid. So I'm gonna put just tiny, ooh, that's got hairs on it. Um, tiny bit of tape in the four corners. Just, I mean, this is not gonna hold it a whole bunch if you know the world goes sideways and the moon loses gravitational pull and we spin off our axis and blah, 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 blah. But it will just kind of 
keep it from sliding while we do the first couple of color stops. Speaking of which, we are gonna put it back in the machine and we are gonna run color stop three, which for this pattern, color stop three, is going to be a lime green. It's gonna be a decorative piece. Um, go ahead and run three, four, and five. Run lime green, orange, and dark whisper gray, and we will be back between color stop five and six. See you between five and six. Okie okay, dokie, okay, guys. Okay. Hey, hey, how you doing? All right, so we've done the lime green. We've done the orange. I went ahead and ran the dye line for our one applique piece on this guy in the orange rather than changing out threads. So we are up to color stop six. We are gonna float this little piece of marine vinyl right here for the windshield, throw it in there and run color stop six. And since this wants to slip slide around a little bit, I am going to borrow some tapey tape from my corners and I am going to just kind of hold that in place then put this in the machine and run color stop six and we'll be back for a trim out and there we go there's the windshield and applique is way more quicker than fill stitch on something that large so we are just going to applique trim around that windshield if you pull your vinyl back a little bit put some tension on it your scissors should slide through it like butter providing you have some nice sharp applique scissors okay we don't want those hacky hacky hack lines Arr, go away okay almost done come here there we go ah yes good good there we go all right, go ahead and put it back in the machine and run color stop um, seven, eight, nine, and 10. We will be back between 10 and 11. All right, so we have got absolutely everything done on our posh book and we are ready for the final step. And that is attaching all the back pieces. So for this, you are gonna need your tape, 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 and because um, our back piece of vinyl is probably totally really going to obscure these placement lines for us and make life difficult. I always grab a pen and a ruler and I extend them out because you need to know where those lines are. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our back, the whole back, the whole big giant back piece, and we are going to tape it in place. And you just wanna make sure that it is covering um, this rounded die line. Okay, you wanna leave yourself some trim room, of course, but this is this, is this part. <laughs> now, ooh, that is not flat. Flat, flat, I tell you. Lay down, there you go. Now we're gonna grab um, our pocket pieces. Oh, and look, our pocket pieces do not jut out. Well, do our pocket pieces jut out enough? No, these are too small. Hold on a second, let me get some more pocket pieces. And just like magic, we now have longer pocket pieces. We want the outside edge um, to line up like so. And we want to make sure when we're putting our tapey tape down that we are not taping um, into our stitch line. That would be bad. Now we're going to rotate it and we're going to line up. Ooh, yeah. We're going to line up right about there. And we are going to put our little piece of tape and our little piece of tape. Except my fingers right where the tape needs to go. Wow, I have got it all together today, don't I? Now, we've got all kinds of things that can catch on our stitch plate. So we are going to saran wrap this like a 1950s mom sending a Wonder Bread and Mayo sandwich to school with the kid. All right. So we are going to tape securely. Tape securely and because I'm paranoid tape some more securely now we're gonna stretch that I am gonna fold that 
under so that I can actually tape it to the hoop. It will probably hold on the stabilizer, but I'm paranoid about this slipping and ruining all of our hard work. So I am going to make sure that I am on something. There we go, there we go. Ooh, and I think just because I, just because I want to keep 3M in business, we're gonna add some tape there as well. All right, we are thoroughly taped. No, we're not. There's always room for, just like J-E-L-L-O, there is always room for more tape. There we go. We are gonna put this in the machine and we are going to run the very last color stop. And I will be back to show you how to trim out this bad boy in just a minute. Hey guys, we are all stitched and tacked and good to go. We got a little bit of a, a hair here that I'm gonna trim out. I am gonna pull off all my uh, tapey tape and WSS. And I did manage to get a good piece of it tape uh, sewed in. So yay me. Ugh, I hate when I do that. But it didn't mess up the stitches, so we can be happy for that. All right. I'm gonna remove this pin. I'm gonna remove this tape. We're gonna pop it out. And I'm probably gonna leave an awful lot of this tape attached to the stabilizer because we're about to cut it away and we are gonna try something new. So you know when I do these guys, I use my roto cutter and I use a hem ruler. Well, somebody on the group said, don't use the hem ruler. Hem ruler, bad. Use um, pampered chef rulers because they're made to be cut on. So I ordered a pampered chef ruler and it is thinner than my metal hem ruler. Um, well, this going back down here, I don't know. So on the very bottom, you do not have to worry about um, ribbons or FOE. The very bottom, you can use a regular ruler and cut that all the way across and look, we're done. However, on the other three sides, it's actually gonna be six cuts. So let's see how this does. I've never, I literally these came in the Amazon box today and I have not played. So, we get to watch this live. If you are squeamish and don't like blood, turn away now, because I will probably cut off some fingers. Eh, who needs fingers, right? So I am lining it up so it's about one eighth of an inch past my stitch line. Well, I missed my ribbon. All right, so that slid a little bit more than I like. Let's try it upside down and see if it's less slidey slidey. So we're gonna jam it between the top vinyl and the ribby ribbon. The ribby ribbon is behind or underneath this ruler. We are going to line up about an eighth of an inch, give or take. Okay, we're gonna grab our roto cutter we're gonna move our finger out of the way. Okay, that worked better. So maybe there's two sides of this. One's kind of and one's really slick. Put the um, rougher side down because it's looking like this is working, okay? I'm not cutting through the mat. I'm not sliding everywhere and this is thinner than my um, hem ruler. Let's see how this one does. Don't you love when I decide to experiment live on camera? We never know what's gonna happen. It's just more indication that I am super lazy. Oh, it slipped out on me. I just, yep. I just sliced through my FOE. Alrighty then, so back to my hem tape. 
That is sad. I am going to have to re-sew this whole thing <sighs> for the web picture. I am sad. I am sad, sad, sad. Ah, so sad. Okay. Oh, uh, we tried. Okay, so hem tape between the FOE and the stabilizer, or hem ruler. Line up. I am so, I don't want to re-sew this. <laughs> Well, ha, intact. Between the um, ribby ribbon and the stabilizer, get it good in that seam. Get it good in that seam. Pull your ribby ribbon tight out of the way. Okay, I did not cut all the way down enough. Plus there's tape and lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, and now last cut. There should be two things you have to avoid here, but apparently not, ha, ha ha. There we go. There we go. What? I can't see my line. There it is. And there it is. And trim. <laughs> now we're going to round our edges. And round and round and round yeah and round there we go okay so if things had gone correctly woohoo we put our posh book in our put our pen in and fold it over and voila, there we are. Use your imagination, guys. It'll look better once it's on the web because I'm going to re-sew it. <laughs> Peace.